Hi everyone, uh, I'm Susie from the Youth Services Bureau and really happy to join you today for this webinar about a practical survival guide for parents of teens. I'm joined by my colleague Michelle from the Youth Services Bureau and Christy from PLEO. Before we start, I would like to send a huge thank you to our sponsor, which is Bell Let's Talk. Bell Let's Talk has been sponsoring our Mind Matters speaker series offering practical, useful, and destigmatizing information about mental health. With that, I will now turn it over to Michelle and Christy. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad that you're here at our first episode of a practical survivor guide for parenting teens. And today we're going to be talking about teen mental health exhaustion. So our goal today is to provide you with a, some real life tips from myself, social worker, and a parent. So my name is Michelle Earl, and I am a social worker who's been working at Youth Services Bureau in the mental health for over 20 years. And so often we hear from parents that they want to learn ways to communicate with their teen, particularly during these difficult times. Um, these last two years have not been easy ones, and the need to connect as a family has never been greater than it is now. Some families are feeling like they're walking on eggshells and not knowing what to say and how to start a conversation, and everyone's stress level is high. These last two years has us all feeling like we've been running a marathon before we've even learned how to run. My name is Christy Kopchik. I'm a mom of a team with mental health challenges and also the program manager at Pleo Parents Lifeline. In the next few minutes, we're going to give you some reasons why teens are experiencing mental health exhaustion and what parents can do to help. We've seen families and youth rushing through our doors in high volumes in our city and our world as we see the dramatic rise in youth mental health concerns. And it's demonstrating the impact that the pandemic has had on youth. Rates of childhood depression and anxiety are on the rise, and that was before the global pandemic. According to a recent study, the number of children and teens who visited the emergency rooms for suicidal thoughts and suicide attempts has doubled over a 10-year period. There's absolutely nothing normal or routine about what we've all been going through in the last two years. Students are feeling tired, and less motivated. Um, there's a sense of loss, of isolation for everybody. And kids are not immune to that. And we could not have necessarily anticipated all the impact that the pandemic was gonna have on them. But when doors opened and kids went back to school, some were scared and disappointed to learn that they were not coping as well as they usually do. We forgot to tell them that everybody Though the doors are open and everybody's back in school, their brains and their bodies were not as prepared as they typically were. We often hear from parents, what can a parent do for a youth that's struggling with their youth mental health? Mental health is a normal thing, so it's important to normalize it, to normalize the exhaustion that they're going through. And sometimes when youth know they're not the only one, they're not the different one, to be struggling, that can really help them to open up. There's a term called fight or flight response. And this is when our bodies are on high alert of danger. We usually have two responses to deal with that danger. It's either we fight our way through it or we take off. In either way, our body responds in a psychological and physiological state that prepares the body to react to that danger. You can probably think of a time when you've experienced a fight or flight response when faced with something frightening. You can start to feel your heartbeat quicken and you may start breathing faster and your entire body becomes tense and ready to take on action. After the threat is gone, it usually takes about 20 to 60 minutes for the body to return to its pre-arousal state levels. So you can imagine if you're always in that constant state of fight or flight, it becomes very exhausting on the body. Our body cannot always tell the difference between the real and the imagined threat. 
Therefore, we interpret the situation as threatening. Our body is going to respond as though the situation is dangerous, even though that actually may not be the case. There are physical responses to chronic stress, such as migraines, aches and pains in our body, and the inability to relax because of being always on high alert. No one was prepared to live in a pandemic for over 20 months. We are all exhausted and are often feeling like, hey, I'm running out of steam and I need a break. Kids are not feeling the same sort of stamina as they typically would. Tired brain is a reactive brain. We understand this on a simple level for small children. We know the more tired they are, the more they will not have the resilience to overcome a problem. Whose six-year-old is not crying at nine o'clock at night? Um, but in the same way, it shows itself, but in teens differently and under prolonged stress, like the stress of the pandemic, it causes exhaustion in them. It reduces their bandwidth to overcome daily challenges that come their way. It makes them more reactive. Exhausted bodies are more likely to take things personally, to feel overwhelmed, to lash out in impulsive anger. They're not wanting to feel anxious. They're not wanting to have suicidal thoughts. We know that kids do well if they can. And if they're struggling with their mental health, they need our calm to help them. They need to know that we're in their corner, that we have their back, and we're gonna help them find their ways to the skill sets they need to be able to manage their mental health. We're not immune either as parents to pandemic stress and reactive brain. You might've noticed that in yourself or in others around you. Recently, adults appear to have shorter fuse. Whether you're in the grocery store or you're in traffic, maybe you've seen it yourself. It is something to acknowledge that's universal. It's no one's fault, but something to keep on our own radar. And its source is pandemic stress. I had a parent tell me recently that they were combating it with what they called Zen parenting. When their brain wanted to act swiftly in a consequence to their child's um, reactive brain, they'd go super Zen. And they'd almost freak their teen out with how cool and calm they were gonna be about it. And in essence, they prevented a sure escalation of the situation, which they then would have had to deal with the consequences of. And there's also supports out there for families as well to be able to vent and to brainstorm and to think about how to react and how to handle some of these things that are going to come up. I encourage our kids to ask for the support they need. At school, this may be talking to teachers about additional tutoring or extensions on assignments. For the most part, teachers are willing to help, but they don't know who needs it unless they ask for it. We need to help them ask. You know, reframe asking for help as a weakness and rather a strength. As parents, we need to reframe asking for help as if you're, you know, pulling yourself up kind of culture. We teach them to do things on their own. You know, that saying of suck it up, but some just can't do that. Help them practice to ask, you know, role play with them or craft a respectful email to the teacher. We know that our bodies are tired and it's important to, to get the appropriate rest. You know, develop a nightly routine with your youth. Perhaps it's shutting down all the technology and reading a book instead, or it could be something simple as maybe having a cup of hot chocolate together as we don't wind down from the day. Proper nutrition is equally important. Be mindful of what you put in your body. Nutrition and sleep is what fuels our bodies. And here are some additional resources for you to access that are in your community. All right, so I'd just like to thank Michelle from YSB and Christy from Plio for their time today. So you can reach us easily at communication.ysb.ca and I will share your question with either Michelle or Christy or both.